because of the passing storm and all the high winds, it's going to be a little bit turbid compared to normal. It's shallow enough. You should be able to see the bottom, but eyes on all parts of the net. Just be careful you don't swim past a tangled turtle on the bottom. Yeah, everybody good? Yeah. Net's in. Oh, turtle on the outside. Two's in the water. Yeah, I don't know how you did that. So this year of the Bermuda Turtle Project is the 50th anniversary. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's the longest running sea turtle research program in the world for green sea turtles uh, in the open water. And the data set that it has on these animals is absolutely incredible. It's, it's invaluable. Sea turtles travel the world's oceans. So they're a wonderful species to study for their own protection, but also to use as a flagship species to speak to all species in the world because of their connections, their ties to habitats, which are vastly important to our ecosystems, especially in a place like Bermuda. Back in the day, there were lots of turtles that nested here in Bermuda, green turtles. Now there are essentially no green turtles that nest here in Bermuda. That nesting population has been completely wiped out. So what we see in Bermuda are the turtles that grow up here, but were hatched on other beaches around the North Atlantic and Caribbean. So the Bermuda Turtle Project is a study that was initiated back in 1968. And there were these big questions about sea turtles in Bermuda, why they weren't breeding, yet there were animals here, what's going on? So they started a mark and recapture program. So Bermuda has one of the biggest databases and is one of the longest running studies of sea turtles in the world. The Bermuda Turtle Project essentially consists of a, of a long-term in-water study. It's a very simple method of encircling an area, usually in shallower waters where turtles are known to forage. Uh, the turtles begin to get caught up in the net and we have people who are snorkeling the net constantly, making sure that as soon as a turtle encounters the net, becomes entangled, they swim down immediately, grab the turtle, and bring it to the surface so it can breathe, and then the catch boat crews over real quick and help get the turtle out of the water. All those little turtles are brought on board to the Endurance, the boat of the Bermuda Aquarium and the Zoological Society, where they are worked up. When we um, catch the turtles in Bermuda waters, we want to make the most of that capture, obviously taking animal out of its natural environment. So our goal is to get as much information as possible that will help the scientists. There's a whole series of measurements we're taking, a carapace length, a plastron length, the length of the tail, and this is going to help us to determine growth rates. We'll take tissue biopsies, weights, and we'll photograph the animal on some occasions. Certainly the tagging is a key part because we're interested in recognizing individuals over time, seeing whether they use the same habitat over time, which they do. In addition to those measurements that we take, we're also taking blood samples and tissue samples. So from a blood sample, you can uh, look at the hormone levels and actually tell if you've got males or females. You can also look at the genetic makeup of these animals and match their DNA to nesting beaches that have already been studied. So we can tell where these animals are coming from, from a blood sample. You can also do the same thing from a tissue sample. Knowing the sex of a turtle, obviously you need a healthy sex ratio. Uh, for a healthy population and our early work in Bermuda has always shown that we've had a 50-50 approximate male-female ratio. Our trend line in the last decade is definitely making a shift towards females. Now, in order to appreciate that, you have to understand that the sex of a sea turtle is not determined by chromosomes, it's determined by the temperature of the sand in which the eggs incubate. And if you look at that in the context of climate change and global warming, you know, we have an early indicator here that this species, like many others in the world, um, are getting out of balance. Well, one of the really interesting things that we've been able to do uh, with new technology is track the migration of these animals. So in recent years, we've gotten into satellite telemetry. So we put out about two transmitters every year. I wish we could do more, but very expensive pieces of equipment. And it downloads information to our computers that tell us exactly where that animal is. It can tell us the depths that it's diving to, the temperature of the surrounding water, 
There's a lot that we can learn about local movements of animals in Bermuda, their sleeping habits, but what we're really interested are those migratory tracks. Where do they go when they leave Bermuda and how do they get there? It became clearer and clearer that they take up residency here in Bermuda during a certain phase of their lives and essentially grow up here. So what it meant to us was that Bermuda was a place that is what we now call developmental habitat and in fact benthic developmental habitat where little green turtles grow up in the absence of adults and then eventually migrate back to the adult foraging ground and they'll begin uh, the cycle of nesting and reproduction, which may take anywhere from 35 or more years after the time they're hatched. The other way uh, the, the program is really special is when it started doing the student program and being able to bring students up from uh, countries where we get sea turtles from. These are young resource managers, fisheries officers, people from other parts of the Caribbean who don't have the same resources that we do in Bermuda and don't have the same opportunities for understanding sea turtle biology. And it's been wonderful for us to see these individuals go home and start projects in their own countries and in influence policy, which in the end is going to help with that global understanding and protection of sea turtles for everybody. I think the, the future of the Turtle Project is bright. We have lots of really good scientists that we work with, with their uh, knowledge, uh, with the new scientists they're bringing in. There's a lot of questions that we still have to answer, and so I think that's the important thing is we've built up a good knowledge base, but yet there are more questions out there so we can totally understand the population of turtles in Bermuda. All sea turtle species are uh, key elements of the ecosystem that they inhabit. Uh, green turtles, for example, are vital to the health of not only the nesting beaches where they nest, but also the large seagrasses and estuaries where they take up residency and are at the top of the food chain in those habitats. Bermuda, without its reef systems, its seagrass beds, and its mangrove habitats, would not have the marine life that we have around us. Without that marine life, your reef breaks down. If the reef breaks down, you no longer have an island. You can take that context much bigger into the, the actual health of the oceans across this globe and share the messages and the science that show people that we are destroying the very resources that keep us alive on this earth. We cannot presume that we are always the more intelligent, more knowledgeable species. We need to look to species like sea turtles and long-lived animals to show us how to live in harmony with our environment rather than destroying it. Well, the Bermuda Turtle Project is really carried out under the auspices of nonprofit organizations. It's been sustained by our nonprofit organization and the Bermuda Zoological Society for 50 years now, and that happens because of individuals, corporations, and other generous donors who help make this work possible. So we're constantly in need of support, looking for new partnerships, and it's a way that people can get involved in the Bermuda Turtle Project. Go to conserveturtles.org backslash Bermuda, learn everything about the project, its history, follow the turtles that we're tracking now, and learn how you can get involved and help.